Happy Thursday, sports bettors. Welcome to Guys and Bets. It is the 30th day of January. Andrew Avery, this, of course, Joe Osborne. I guess, as it says there, uh, now definitively known as the Sweep Dog. Yeah, Sweep Dog. Uh, so we got two sweeps in a row. People started calling me Sweep Dog after the sweep yesterday. And there's actually a little song, if you'd like to hear it. I <laughs> I'd love to hear it. A little sweep dog song uh, that is sweeping the nation a little bit of a jingle, and it goes a little something like this. Because every single person I know and every single place I go, they call me sweep dog. <laughs> They're singing it everywhere. I've never heard anybody sing that, People Joe. humming it up and down the floors of the office. <laughs> The restaurant I was at for breakfast this morning, people were singing it, humming it. The manager said Sweep Dog does not pay for his breakfast. You're getting free breakfast yeah. now yeah. around the town. That's yeah, going great. Uh, yeah, of course, Joe, another 3 0 show, but uh, the two of us, Immaculate G and B. That's a bigger story. 6 0. Immaculate um, show. Yeah, so hopefully we keep that momentum going. And uh, I know. <laughs> There's frequently uh, people that follow us on Twitter that say, uh, you know, hey guys, I decided to parlay some of your picks. Now, if you did parlay all six yesterday, pretty, pretty good little pretty payout good. there. <laughs> yeah. Not bad at so all. Do the exact same thing again today. Parlay all <laughs> do six picks. Not, do not do that for the love of God. Um, yeah, four NBA picks today. Joe's got another college basketball play. And then uh, I have a pick. There's a... a Friday game in the Bundesliga in Germany. So I got a pick for that one just because it's a thin NBA board. And uh, we've got most of that good stuff covered. Uh, now, yesterday on the show, it was also discovered in a Guys and Bets exclusive that uh, our very own uh, Ian McMillan started uh, dating a female. Has there been, a, uh, has there been a, a first kiss? Now, my question to you, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think your mic is on there, Ian, but... Uh, Amateur hour. My question to you is, and I did feel a little bad because uh, I wanted you to wave to her and I referred to her as your girlfriend and you said that uh, that is indeed not the case. So I'm hoping that she didn't watch and then you didn't get into trouble. So uh, can you confirm or deny? She hasn't mentioned anything. I don't think she watched, but I'm starting to get a little bit nervous because now everyone on Twitter uh, keeps mentioning my girlfriend. Yeah. And someone said because I went five and one of my picks yesterday that uh, I can now afford a ring for my girlfriend. So. Oh my god. So, um, scare this poor girl <laughs> off. And she definitely follows me on Twitter. So let's all let's uh let's what's hang her, back. What's on, her Twitter handle? What's whose? Hers? Yeah. Yeah. Let's not get into that. Does she have a public Instagram account that people can go check out? <laughs> moving on. Moving on from this topic once again. I regret telling you guys I went on a date. Bring her in for the Super Bowl show <laughs> oh on Sunday. Oh my God. Be a staff, nice treat. Staff only. Oh well. <laughs> be a nice treat for the audience. Yeah. So I went five and one with my picks yesterday. So total, yes. if we include my, if we include the guy in the back picks with your guys' picks, that's a eleven and one. If my math's correct. That's yes, good. you you are indeed one of the guys. The show is called Guys and Bets, yes. and the three of us are the guys who bet. So yes, eleven and one. That is pretty good. Insane. Yeah, some pretty sort good. of record, I'd imagine. And now it is almost February. We're two days away, and my Christmas decorations are still up because, of course, it's good luck. It's my good luck Christmas tree. Hopefully, it stands for the rest of the year. Um, ho, 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 Merry <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> uh, I'm back here sweating a couple of three ball bets in golf. So, to be completely honest, I haven't had a chance to look at too much college basketball yet today. So, I'm not going to have any college basketball picks. But, Boo, uh, Ernst. There will be a couple other college basketball picks from some other couple people, including one from you there, Joe. So, let's uh, not waste any more time. Let's get in the picks. I'll talk to you at the end. If you have any questions in the chat, let me know. Yeah, let's uh, get into that. And uh, it's Thursday, so a thin uh, NBA schedule tonight. But we have a couple <laughs> picks for uh, the first game on tap here, which is uh, the Sixers. Visiting the Hawks, uh, Joe, get us started. Uh, yeah, let's get right into this one. We're going to target a team total with the Sixers. Their number is set at 117 and a half, and we are going under this one. Let's get into it. The Sixers have been much more of a defensive-oriented team this season and have only scored 118 or more in one of their last 15 games and in seven of 48 games this season. In their lone matchup versus the Hawks this season, they scored 105 points. Atlanta's defensive numbers are anything but impressive. However, they don't make it easy for opponents to get a lot of shots up as they rank fifth in shot attempts allowed per 100 possessions over the last 10 games. 
This is an important consideration with Philly in the bottom third of the league in possessions. It's also important to note that the Hawks are allowing 8.2 fewer points per game on their home floor with a much better defensive efficiency rating. To conclude, the Sixers are struggling in two key areas that could make or break this bet. Over the last 10 games, they ranked 26 in free throw rate and 28 in three-point shooting percentage. Give me under the Sixers team total tonight in the ATL. Yeah, I like this game from a betting perspective as well here, Joe. So right back here in this one, and uh, I'm going to go Sixers first quarter. Minus one and a half here in this one. Uh, Sweep Dog over here updates a running column that tracks the betting numbers for NBA first quarter and first half bets. So when you dig into this column, which is very useful, so you all should have this bookmarked, the Sixers are one of the best first quarter bets in the league at 29 and 19 ATS. 15 and 9 ATS on the road, it should be added. This is thanks in large part to the third best first quarter point differential in the league at plus three, while the Hawks proved to be the best first quarter fade because their numbers absolutely stink. Yes, once again, in Joe's column, it shows that these Atlanta Hawks are 17, 30, and one against the spread in the first quarter, the second worst first quarter bet in the NBA behind the Denver Nuggets. The Hawks first quarter plus minus, why that would be the worst in the league at minus 4.7. All the numbers here give a big edge to the Sixers, speeding off to an early lead here. They average 28.7 first quarter points, while the Hawks do score 26.4 themselves. But defensively, the Hawks allow teams to score 31.3, the most in the NBA, while the Sixers limit teams to the second fewest at 25.8. Sixers, number five in first quarter offensive rating. Hawks, number 29. Sixers, number two in first quarter defensive rating. Hawks dead last. Sixers, number three in net rating. Hawks dead last again by such a big margin. These two have met once already, and the Hawks actually outscored them by nine in the first quarter. So, Joe, it's the classic first quarter revenge spot here ah, in this one. Yes. Joe's favorite. Give me the Sixers early, minus one and a half in the first Q. Revenge. <laughs> the first quarter revenge spot. You got to love it. Uh, let's stick uh, on uh, the East Coast here with the Boston Celtics hosting the Golden State Warriors, Joe. Yeah, we got the Warriors in Beantown tonight, and we have another first quarter bet. Uh, the total is set at 57 points, and we're going to go under. Here's why. The first quarter under in Warriors games is one of the hotter bets across the NBA, as it's hit in 11 of their last 13, including six straight on the road. You might think this is due to being awful on offense, which is a big part, but... They've been clamping down on defense early in games, holding teams to the fourth lowest EFG percentage in the first quarter during the 13 games. Speaking of that awful offense, though, each team has been slow out of the gates, ranking 25th and 26th in first Q EFG over the last 10 games. And low scoring first quarters are par for the course with the Celtics, as they have the fourth lowest average combined first quarter score in the NBA. For the season, they rank a surprising 22nd in first quarter scoring at home, while Golden State is dead last on the road. Give me the first quarter under tonight in Boston. For all the best in sports betting and free picks, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Seriously, do these things. Yes, you definitely want to go ahead and do those things. Please and thank you. Um, all right. Raptors at Cavaliers as well tonight on the NBA board. Don't really need a ton of explanation for this one. Just going to go with Pascal Siakam over 23 and a half here against the Cavs. And we've said it before on the show here, Joe. First thing you look at when you're thinking about player props in the NBA is whether or not the Cavs are playing. And uh, the second thing you look at is uh, who the best player is on the other team. So in this instance, we have Pascal Siakam at 23 and a half so it's the ideal situation of star player versus awful defense at a reasonable ish number siakam saw a few 18 and a half on the board after coming back from injury but only in the last few games has he been the siakam we all know and love after only eclipsing eclipsing 20 points one time in the first six games back from injury he's put up 23 35 and 24 in the last three and you all know about the Cavs defense, second worst in the league in defensive rating, 114.7. Bottom third in the league in opponent PPG, 114.1. Second highest in opponent field goal percentage, yada, yada, yada. The list goes on. These two teams have met twice 
both of which were easy wins for the Raps, both by 20 points, I believe. But Siakam only played in one as the uh, second meeting was during the injury. Regardless, he put up 33 in that one, shooting 54% from the floor, 62% from three. And this is a game where an excellent Raptors defense can capitalize in the transition game against a very turnover happy Cavs team. Cavs turn the ball over the second most times per game in the league at 16.3 and teams score uh, just under 20 points per game off of those turnovers. Raps are second in the NBA with 8.7 steals so there should be some opportunities for Siakam to get out and run and score some easy buckets. Regardless the number here is basically bang on a scoring average so against the awful Caval Cavaliers defense I'm going over for Spicy P as they call him Joe. Yeah you got to that one before I did sadly. Were you interested in that one as well? I was. Fantastic. I love it when uh, we are on the same side. Uh, college basketball, and you've been uh, doing pretty good here. Yeah, the two college. straight winners each day this week, or yep. the last two I've done picks for. So. Yep, last two picks uh, have been bang on. Unders. And uh, for this one, it's Kennesaw State, and it is Liberty. Yeah. What do you got for this? Uh, yeah, big uh, showdown in the Atlantic Sun Conference going down tonight in Virginia. Uh, we have a total set at 119 for this one. And what are we doing? We're going under. Let's get into it. 119 is a low number, but maybe not low enough considering the recent pattern of low scoring Liberty games. They've gone under in 14 of 20 on the season, including a recent pair that's seen them hit the under in six of their last eight, with the games having an average combined score of just 113. Kennesaw State. Looks like a great partner for another low scoring game considering they rank 352nd in effective field goal shooting percentage. As a result, they rank 350th in points per game, which is fourth worst in the entire nation. They've gone under a 9 of 11 on the road, by the way. Liberty doesn't exactly fill it up a lot either as they rank 294th in points per game, but this is mainly due to an incredibly slow pace that I think will dictate this entire game. They rank 352nd in possessions per game, resulting in ranking 347th in shot attempts and holding opponents to the fourth fewest shots per game. Given the slow pace and Kennesaw's horrendous shooting, this looks like the perfect recipe for an under tonight at the Vine Center in Lynchburg, Virginia. I was hoping that uh, you were actually going to make a bet on the Liberty spread. Uh, if I was, I would side with them. It's a big number. I think it's around minus 22 and a half or something like because that. Because then you could say, give me liberty or give me death. Nah, that's not my thing. <laughs> I don't care for that expression. <laughs> All right, over to uh, Germany for a little Bundesliga action on Friday, of course. Uh, so it's Hertha Berlin at home against uh, Schalke. Always risky to back unders in the, the Bundesliga as games are frequently high scoring. But with Schalke on the road here in a Friday game, under two and a half looks to be a potentially good spot in this one for just that. These teams just don't score a ton of goals. Schalke, not bad, 31 goals in 19 games. Uh, but Hertha just 24 in 19. Schalke has 15 in nine road games, while Hertha has just 11 in nine home games. Neither team likes to play with the ball. Schalke, 49% possession, and Hertha near the bottom at 45.1. And when it comes to shooting the ball, forget about it. Schalke, 15th in the league with just 12.2 shots per game. Hertha, dead last, 9.9. .9. And expected goal numbers don't necessarily paint a pretty picture either. Hertha's XG is 22.38, so less than their actual scoring, while Schalke's XG reveals them to have been very fortunate so far. Their XG is just 23.87, which is 7.13, which is minus 7.13 on the season. Plus, we get Schalke's number one keeper, Alexander Newbell, returning in this one after having served a four-game suspension. So that's big for this team, but it does look like they could be without defenders Benjamin Stambouli, former Tottenham player, and Salif Sané. So with these two at different spots on the table and Schalke on the road, this also sort of feels like it has a draw written all over it, as I feel both managers would be quite content with splitting the points here. Schalke trying to keep a grip on a Europa League spot and Hertha looking to stay away from the relegation zone. I see this one as a game with minimal risk taking in possession and to be played very, very conservatively. It's a good candidate for a draw here, but I'll play the under. Of course, it's Germany, so there's also a good chance that it could blow up by halftime. A lot of goals in that league, Joe. I like it. I like your t-shirt. Dr. Dre? Yeah, my favorite raptor is, or rapper. Raptor? Rap, uh, rap musical artist is, I like uh, Notorious uh, Big and Tupac. <laughs> 
There are my oh, yeah. two absolute favorites. Uh, Snoop Doggy Dog yeah. is another. Yeah. This is like having a conversation about hip hop with my dad. Well, I'm just saying, it's the music I care for. So. Yeah, so Snoop Doggy Dog, Notorious Big, mm -hmm. and Tupac, you say. Eminem. Eminem. <laughs> Eminem. Uh, speaking of music, uh, today we asked you fine folks about your thoughts on the national anthem and whether you'll be playing the over or the under. Always a popular wager to kick off Super Bowl Sunday. So let's see what you said. Over or under? Well, 54%. Say over two minutes and four seconds. Well, of course, 46. Say uh, under 204, Joe. Hmm, yeah, I don't know on this one yet. Maybe it would be very helpful if we could get some more information, maybe some nuggets on how to handicap this a little bit better. Eh? An absolutely fantastic segue because we have just that here on the show. Yes, our very own uh, Jill Gallant, who was hired specifically to cap national anthem stuff. This is uh, Jill here. This is great. Thank you. Thank Has you. Uh, dug into these numbers. Uh, so what have you uncovered when you've looked at uh, the anthem in the Super Bowl and, of course, Demi Lovato? Or is it Demi Lovato? I'm not hip Lovato, with what the kids Lovato, are listening Lovato, to. Lovato, tomato, tomato, same thing, right? Oh, right. wow. <laughs> now, leave the clever <laughs> stuff up to me. You don't okay, need to right, come right. out of <laughs> right, yeah. I don't want I don't want to overstay my welcome here. <laughs> now, what do you got uh, here for uh, the anthem? Well, the one thing that is really standing out is uh, that the over has just been hammered from the start that since this has opened. Uh, it initially opened at 1 minute 55 seconds. Okay. And then it has moved to then 2 minutes. And then, of course, in another prop at uh, 2 minutes and 4 seconds. Okay. Um, the two minutes right now that is available uh, online, it's at uh, over is minus 230 mm. with the under at plus 160. Uh, when we looked uh, at the time tracking since Super Bowl 40, we've tracked every time. You've seen some that come in at uh, minute 40, some at 220. Uh, the average runtime is a minute 57 seconds. Now, the one thing I wanted to say is that uh, when Demi did sing at... Um, it would be uh, Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather uh, back in 2017. Yes. Uh, she clocked in at 2.12. Okay. Uh, now, for Game 4 of the 2015 World Series, that was the Royals and Mets, yes. uh, she clocked in at a minute 58. Ooh. And the one thing that I did check is just how long did she hold that note of Brave? And it was about four and a half seconds, so something to keep in mind because she really went for it on that one and yeah. it still only clocked in at a minute 58. So wow. I'm really okay. liking the under at two minutes and four seconds here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good stuff That's there. Values, eh? Yeah, and I mean, a lot of people love betting the uh, over-under anthem at the Super Bowl, and uh, it can actually be a very exciting moment. Uh, let's go into the back and check in uh, with someone who doesn't know anything about length either. Ian McMillan. Ian, <laughs> uh, what is going on in the back? And do you have any thoughts on the uh, anthem? Yeah, I ended up taking the under. Uh, it opened at, uh, what was it, 156 or something, Jill, you said it opened at. But uh, I waited for it to go up to the 204, what was it that was in that number in the poll, and I took the under. So let's hope for that for me. All right, fingers crossed. Uh, I like I said at the top of the show, I don't have anything for college basketball here today because I just have. I mean, I'm off the next two days, so I got to do all my work in preparation for Super Bowl Sunday today. So I've been busy, but I'm going to try to get out a couple plays before the end of the day. So follow me on Twitter. I'll do my best to look into them. I don't like the board tonight at all. It's kind of a crappy board, to be honest. When is uh, your second date? <laughs> Tomorrow, I think. Any plans or just going to wing it? <laughs> There's plans. Can we tune into your Instagram story for live yeah. updates? I'm going to live stream on, on my Periscope on Twitter. Catch that. I'm going to live stream the whole day. No. Uh, uh, let's Once again, let's move on from this topic very quickly. I'm never telling you guys when I'm going on a date ever again, by the way. Um, questions, questions, questions. Briston Reese. Uh, how are we feeling about Nuggets minus one and a half against the struggling Jazz team tonight? Also, Jazz on a back-to-back -back coming, coming from San Antonio. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that the Jazz are struggling. Okay, they've lost two straight, uh, and one of them was a really bad loss at home to the Rockets. There is a pretty big uh, favorite. But still, you look at these teams over the last 10, we got a major shooting edge for the Jazz. First, an effective field goal shooting percentage, whereas the Nuggets way down there at 26. The Jazz also a better free throw percentage, better turnover percentage. Uh, so that line jumped the fence. They opened at minus one. Now it's plus one and a half. I like the Jazz as an underdog quite a bit. Here comes the Jazz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, back on track. Tribe Called Quest. Let's head to the pitch this. here for a quick second. <laughs> sure. 
question for Ninja on Copa del Rey. Any chance Mirandis pulls off upset at plus 750 or plus one and a half at minus 130? It seems like the top teams have been struggling going on the road to second division teams. Thanks, boys. And this is from our good friend Jonathan Fernandez. Yeah, uh, so a bit of a weird tournament in Spain this year. A lot of the home dogs are either cashing straight up money lines or um, the double chances in play. Um, so yeah, Sevilla is on the road here, uh, seven to one for the home dog. I mean, you don't take it too seriously, like half unit or, or something like that, uh, with such a, a massive home underdog in this one. But the way the Copa del Rey has been going, I think it's worth a little punt on that one. Seven to one. We saw, um, I can't remember what day it was. Uh, but there were about five or six uh, Copa del Rey games. I think the lower league teams knocked out four of the La Liga teams. It's just been a wild tournament. So, uh, yeah, Barcelona and Leganes in the other one. Uh, Barca's at home in this one, though. But the way they've been playing, total stay away from me. They uh, just passing the ball thousands of times. No uh, finished product on there. And, of course, they miss Luis Suarez a lot. Stay away from me from there. But in the other one, Sevilla on the road. Yeah, me. Look at the home dog in that one. Bad news. Both uh, golfers I bet on in the three ball just missed seven foot putts. Old so. three ball McMillan. What are you doing watching that while we're doing a live program? Yeah, thanks for tuning <laughs> into the program. <laughs> Getting live updates, man. I got some people. Um, Miles Duels quickly chimes in. What about Jake Paul versus Gibb tonight? Um, uh, you guys probably don't have any thoughts about that, but I actually am going to put money on the Gib guy because Jake Paul opened as an underdog and then it went all the way and is like a minus 240 favorite. So fade the public in that one. Okay. Um, and then finally, I have one more question here for you guys and then one quick comment at the end. But Randy Sari wants to know, how do you guys like Bradley Beal over 27 and a half points tonight? He has been on fire. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, anytime Beal takes the floor, he's a good candidate. I actually considered that one for the show, but at uh, the book I was looking at, it was 28 and a half, and the over was minus 150. Ooh. Of course, he's on an absolutely torrid pace here. Uh, I believe 40 plus points the last two games, I want to say 47, 40, 36, 38, 29. Yeah, it's just uh, ridiculous. He has a 30 point game and a 16 point game against the Hornets. Uh, one big red flag, though, the Hornets play such a slow so, pace. You yes, know? that's so. the thing you got to consider, and it's a great point by Joe. The Hornets so love to slow it down. We saw they played the Knicks the other night. Both teams under 100 there. Yeah. Uh, not saying that's going to happen here, but that's got to come into your capping. The Hornets want to slow the game down. They're polar opposites. The Wizards, we know, love to push the tempo. They don't play any defense. Uh, but the Hornets, yeah, slow pace. I mm -hmm. uh, like to walk around the floor. But, man, anytime you want to bet Beal over... Do it. Yeah. It's going to cash more than it's not. So, yeah. And then finally, I think we're going to end on this. For everyone in the chat who's looking for a college basketball play, as I mentioned, I don't have any, but you know who I trust even more than myself when it comes to basketball picks? Your girlfriend? <laughs> G-Dog 5000, Jill Glant has a big play. Yes, he does. <laughs> and and uh, good that. luck on date number two there, Ian. Uh, but yeah, Jill, you put out a 50,000 unit, whatever the heck he said on Twitter this morning. Tell the folks at home what it is. Yeah, so this is my max bomb lock unit whale of 2020. And it is the Washington Huskies money line over the Arizona Wildcats tonight in Pac-12 play for college basketball. Okay. okay. Uh, the Wildcats, they're 0-4 on the road this year. They have yet to win a game on the road. Uh, the Huskies are 9-3 and at home. Uh, so far, just the way the stats are matching up, they're talent for talent. Chase Jeter as well for the Wildcats. He is questionable tonight. Even if he does play, I think he's going to be limited. I just think this is a good spot to get the Huskies tonight. There you okay. go. Okay. Any thoughts on uh, the Aaron Hernandez documentary on Netflix? Absolutely zero. <laughs> you didn't watch it? No, I watched it. Oh. I have zero thoughts. Okay. <laughs> right. Just curious. Um, yeah, so uh, a couple housekeeping issues here. Uh, Super Bowl Sunday. Yes. We will be live. Uh, me, Joe, Ian, and Jill, and potentially more, will be live. Uh, same time, same channel. Uh, Jill will be uh, dropping his uh, three favorite anytime touchdown score That's prize. Right. For the game, and if you follow him on Twitter, at GDog5000, you know he <laughs> loves to bet touchdown props, and you know he hits more Killing often it. than not. So you're going to want to tune into that. And then uh, we're going to take the week off yes. the show. No guys and bets the week after the Super Bowl. Slackers. It has been 
uh, a uh, long but very fun football season. So Joe and I uh, need a bit of uh, time to recharge the old batteries. Absolutely. Moving forward. And then uh, the week after that, when we do return, we're going back to two studio shows. Mm -hmm. But me, Joe, and Ian will be delivering content every day. But the show you know, the show you love, it will be twice weekly on Friday. And then I believe Wednesday? Uh, yeah, I don't think that's been locked Not down locked yet. In. But we're still going to have picks content every single day. Guys and Bets yes. Quickies. Guys and Bets Quickies. Uh, me, Joe, Ian, and potentially more will be uh, in for that. So... Some changes uh, moving forward, but things that don't change are the fact that you should like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, as it says right there, Yeah, uh, <laughs> as, as the graphic <laughs> indicates. Uh, and if you could do that, that would be so kind, and we would appreciate it. So there you go. Uh, lots of stuff uh, for tonight, and uh, some anthem nuggets from the Super Bowl. You're going to want to follow Sweep Dog over here. Uh, does anybody on Twitter have the handle at SweepDog? I haven't searched yet. I might have to change that. I think you should. I think you should. Uh, but at JTFOZ for now, at Chalk underscore Ninja over here, at GDog5000 right here, but that's G D A W G 5000. That's it. I like the D O double G for yeah, the. Yeah, that's your preference. Sweep for SweepDog. Because <laughs> every single person I know and every single place I go, they call me Sweep Dog. And Ian McMillan is at Ian Mac OS. So uh, give us a follow. Uh, best of luck with your bets tonight. Uh, we will catch you tomorrow right here on the Friday edition of Guys and Bets, which will be a normal sports edition. Sports edition. Of guys of the show. and Bets. As we go into Super Bowl Sunday, good luck. We'll see you tomorrow. What?